The name Alderson Disc probably doesn't ring a bell for most of us, but we've all likely seen pictures of them through sci-fi. A vast 2D Earth-like structure that could circle an entire sun, stretching to the orbit of Jupiter and potentially supporting trillions of inhabitants. Up there with the Dyson Sphere or Stellar Thruster, it's possibly one of the most ambitious mega projects ever thought of. However, before we get into the exact reasons why it's a terrible idea, I want to look at what civilization would actually make this. That way we can better understand what is and isn't going to be a challenge. The livable area of an Alderson disk is over 60 million Earths. That means you could support over 500 trillion humans on such a planet. To put that into perspective, if you were to count one human, every second starting when apes were just about to become humans, you wouldn't even be halfway done. Which sounds like a lot, but that's only at the population density of Earth living on the disk, not considering the other parts which may become inhabitable and other planets. So it would be a massive population many, many years down the road. Every other theoretical space mega project or technology that could exist will exist. You would need massive solar arrays, planet transforming technologies, generational spaceships, and maybe even light speed travel just to colonize enough planets, asteroids, moons, and dwarf planets to get to a fraction of this population. And so for this reason, we're going to rule out any technical challenges like shipping mass to such a structure because a civilization at this point will likely have this figured out. With that being said, this leads us into our first reason, it's a terrible idea. To build an Alderson disk, you would need such an incredible amount of mass that you would need to take in every planet, every asteroid, every moon, and every dwarf planet from tens, possibly hundreds of thousands of light years around. This means if you were to build an Alderson disk, you would either need to kick trillions of people off their home planet, or fly hundreds of thousands of light years to a never been seen location and start a new civilization. Of course, once you finish the disk, your civilization would be left with just about nothing to colonize for possibly hundreds of light years around, so you would need to rely entirely on space habitats like O'Neill cylinders. Having such a large body of mass brings in the next problem I doubt technology can fix in this situation, gravity. This is a really difficult situation to visualize because of how it circles a star and just how it's built. In this instance, gravity points toward the star, not down. The best way to visualize this is if you threw a ball up into the air. The ball would curve inward toward the star, which to you would seem like it's falling at an angle, not straight back down. This would make the surface feel tilted, which is extremely weird to think about. If that wasn't enough, the gravity also changes further or closer you are to the center. If you're close, the gravity is so immense it would crush you, and if you were far, it would be negligible. Originally, I thought spinning the disc could create centrifugal force, like an O'Neill cylinder. But the disc is so massive and wide, it would end up just tearing itself apart. This means the promise of trillions of square miles of land is misleading, and Alderson Disk is wildly inefficient compared to other megastructures like O'Neill cylinders. And in a civilization where one of the only limitations is mass in the galaxy, that's a problem. There's only a small band that would be livable by today's standards, which may not be important if we invent advanced heat shielding or if humans by then have evolved to suit different gravities, but it's still something to think about. The next problem is the day-night cycle. It's frequently said that if an Alderson disk was created, the entire structure would get 24 hours of dusk, which humans may be able to survive, but any animal that relies on seasons or the day-night cycle couldn't exist. There has been a proposed solution to use gamma ray lasers to move the sun up and down in the center, but that's just one more variable to consider. Also, while we're here near the sun, we have to address the atmosphere. Since gravity is pulling everything inward, we would need to create a massive barrier on the inside wall to keep the atmosphere in. This wall would block sunlight from both sides of the disk while it moves up and down and would cast a massive shadow. Although we have ruled out the construction because we don't know what a civilization of this size is capable of, I still want to look at a few parts of it. You couldn't crash a whole bunch of mass together and expect to have an Alderson disk, since there's no material that can withstand this stress. And unlike a Dyson Swarm, a disk is one giant fragile structure. Since its mass would be much larger than anything possible within 100 light years, it would be vulnerable to stray planets or asteroids. Any maintenance may be impossible due to the sheer scale. It's a good chance most fractures would go unnoticed. If in the worst case scenario something of this size were to collapse in on itself, we couldn't rule out the possibility of a black hole. Well, I may be getting ahead of myself a little bit on this one. In an argument for Alderson disks, its size isn't unheard of. The biggest star ever found is UY Skyoti, which has a radius of around 1,700 times larger than the radius of the sun. To put that into perspective, that's the volume of almost 5 billion suns. My final point is the other options that would be better suited to just about anything an Alderson disk would be used for. If you are creating an Alderson disk for power generation, a Dyson Sphere is going to be far more efficient. If you just needed more habitable space, O'Neill cylinders have a more manageable size and more controllable climate. 
and if you truly wanted to build a massive planet, I believe you'd be better off with a ring world. They're still absurd, but less so than an Alderson disk, because they have more habitable space and less gravity issues. At the end of the day, I believe an Alderson disk stands as an example that bigger isn't always better. A real megastructure needs to balance physics, energy, and the needs of humans, not just raw landmass. This video was a lot of fun to make. As always, I'll be reading all the comments. Please join the Discord if you want to help with future videos, and I'll see you guys all next week.